Hi, I've recently been building a new computer just for video capture and video editing because I've noticed, particularly with the recent update to Adobe Premiere Pro 2020, that it's a little bit slow at just generally doing so. So importing video, some of the editing um, has really slowed down. I don't know what they've done in the most recent update, but it's pretty poor and it's got to the point where I've got sick of my old machine. It's not hugely old, I think it's about four years old. It's based on a older AMD processor and I thought I would upgrade. So I bought a Ryzen 9 with a X570 chipset motherboard and the final part of the puzzle is a graphics card. And I've previously been using uh, workstation type cards. So my wife's a graphic designer, so we have the full Adobe suite and we've been using more of a workstation style uh, PC to do all of our work on. So I've been using an ATI Fire Pro W5100 recently. And before that, I think it was a W5000. And in the new PC, it's not giving quite the performance that I was expecting. So I've currently put the graphics card back in the old PC and I bought this one. And I thought it would be interesting to see, first of all, whether the Chinese graphics cards are any good. Um, I've heard of the brand Colourful. It's actually um, made its way into Australia as well as a slightly more budget brand, although it's not that much cheaper than the mainstream stuff that you can buy from the uh, PC shops that you'd normally shop from. So I had a quick look and if we take a look at um, Scan for example, this is a UK retailer that sells um, PC parts. You can see that the typical price for a GTX 1660 is somewhere around £200 and this graphics card that I've bought, I actually bought this with my own money so this hasn't been provided by Banggood although I did buy it from here. It's currently at £188 when I bought this, there was actually a 20% voucher going, so it was actually quite a bit cheaper, but I thought I'd take a punt just to see what it's like. Um, if you have a look on Banggood, there's various different types. There's some of the ones with the improved RAM and RAM speed, so the, the TI version, they're a little bit more expensive. I thought this would be fine because the part of the graphics card that I want to use, and there's quite a lot of discussion over this about how Adobe uses the hardware acceleration. It does have various encoders, hardware encoders built into this, this graphics card. And it doesn't entirely use the encoding just for transcoding coding. It does use the CPU quite intensively. And previously, it would max out the CPU and the graphics card would be sitting somewhere around 40%. And oddly, on my new PC, the CPU is only utilizing between 30 and 50% and the graphics card hasn't really increased in its utilization. So I've done a few various configurations and I've not really been that impressed. So I'm hoping that um, this graphics card might do a little bit better. It's, it's newer than the Fire Pro cards and the Fire Pro cards are a little bit more expensive. So I thought I'd give something like this a go first. Generally speaking, I think Adobe tends to prefer the GeForce type cards with CUDA and everything like that built into it than uh, the support for AMD, which isn't quite so good. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a little look at the graphics card, first of all. And from what I can see, um, there doesn't seem to be anything uh, to worry about in terms of the quality of the card. I've not actually opened it yet, but um, from what I can see, it all looks fairly legitimate. So I've seen various reviews of people buying graphics card from Wish.com and they've just been uh, absolute crap. Uh, this all looks absolutely fine. So we've got a metal heat spreader on the back. I think that's also just to protect you from touching the PCBs. We've got various heat pipes, which are holding the heat sink, uh, you know, connecting the heat sink to the thermal pad on the GPU. And then we've got a couple of fans. In terms of connectivity on this particular device, we've got DisplayPort, HDMI, and a DVI connector, which is uh, fine for my purposes. And there's not really too much else to speak of. So we've got an eight pin, connector for power and nothing else. So in terms of uh, the quality, everything feels exactly as you would expect from even a more premium brand. So what I will do is I probably will do a quick benchmark to make sure that we've got the real thing here and we're not just being fobbed off uh, with a cheaper GPU. But then we'll install it um, and try doing the transcoding, so the export process from Adobe Media Encoder and see if this gives us any better results. What I really want 
is to be able to export the videos at better than one-to-one -one, um, time. I, enc I encode them and export in 4K, I think 60 megabits per second, and that does result in relatively large file sizes, and I think that's really sort of what slowed down some of the export process. But I'm just going to stick this in the machine, and then we'll see if it boots up properly and see what happens. Right, so that's the W5000 graphics card that I tested in this machine. The W5100 is in the PC that's currently recording this video. This one has the oldest version of the AMD video encoding engine, so version 1. We're currently using version 2, and it does use the graphics card because when I put a, um, a different graphics card in here that didn't have the correct support, it took absolutely forever to encode a video just trying to do it software only. So it definitely does use aspects of the video card. And we should now be able to put the new graphics card in instead. So let's try and do that. Right, so that's in there nicely. And in terms of the rest of the PC, we've got a pretty decent setup going. So first of all, we've got the Ryzen 9, and this is water-cooled by this Cooler Master uh, water-cooling all-in-one system. And this was pretty cheap, so I got this on Black Friday. I think it only cost about £25. So um, I didn't mind choosing this over the air cooling. We've got 32 gigabytes of ballistics RAM running at 3200 megahertz. The 30, 3600 megahertz RAM was quite a lot more expensive. So I thought I'd test out this one first, but it doesn't seem to be bottlenecking in terms of the RAM speed. Then we've got an M.2 SSD behind this heat spreader here. And this is probably the second fastest one that you can get. So this is the Corsair MP600 SSD, and that's supposed to get in the region of uh, 5,500 megabytes per second. Um, so certainly not going to be bottlenecking uh, video encoding. And then obviously we've just installed the GTX 1660. Now this has an 8-pin connector, and unfortunately I've got a slightly older power supply. I think you can actually just plug the 6-pin into the 8-pin header, but we're going to use one of these slightly sketchy adapters. And it, all it has is an extra two uh, ground pins on here. So uh, we'll plug that in. And that's about it. So I think we should be good to power this up. And as you can see, everything seems to boot up properly. So the next thing to do is just check that the GPU is actually genuine. So I've run a little benchmark here on CSOF Sandra, and you can see we're comparing against similar GPUs, including one of the 1660, and the red line is where we are. So I've got no concerns that we've got a fake GPU. It all seems to be behaving absolutely perfectly. So let's have a little look at how it handles the encoding. And so what I've done here is I've set up three encoding tasks. So first of all, my usual H.264 encoding at 60 megabits per second. Then I've done one with H.265, which only really has the benefit of reducing the file size slightly, but previously that was going to take hours because the GPU didn't support H.265 encoding, so it had to do that entirely in software. And then finally, another H.264 encoding task at a slightly reduced bitrate of 40 megabits per second. And in contrast to the old W5000 series Fire Pro card, the CPU utilization has now jumped up near 90%. So it does vary depending on what's happening in the scene and the encoding task, but now we're seeing much higher CPU utilization. So uh, we're starting to see the benefits of the faster processor. And as a result, the encoding time is dropping. So on my old PC, for every minute of video, it would normally takes somewhere between three and four minutes to export that video. And now that it's finished, you can see that's taken about two minutes, nine seconds to encode a two minute segment. Next, it's starting the H.265 encoding. And this is way quicker than it was before. So it was gonna take hours and hours previously. And I've just skipped this bit here and you can see that's coming in at five minutes and seven seconds to encode a two minute video. So that's really not too bad at all. It'll be interesting to see what the file size difference actually is. And then finally, we've got the H.264 with the reduced bit rate of 40 megabits per second. And in this case, it's taken two minutes and one second. 
And considering these are relatively short encoding tasks, the overheads are taking up probably quite a large proportion of the overall time here. So once we're encoding longer videos, I'm hoping that we'll be able to reach that sort of one-to-one -one real time encoding. I do need to have a little play around with the export settings from OBS Studio. When I used to just use the SD cards from my Canon cameras, the overall processing time was a lot shorter, including the time just to get it into Adobe and start editing the files. So I'm probably not using the most optimal settings in OBS Studio to import into Premiere Pro. So if anyone's got any suggestions on the best workflow there, then leave a comment down below. I also will put a link to the graphics card at Banggood in the description down below. Like I said, I did actually buy this one with my own money, but I'm quite happy with the purchase. With the discount codes that you can typically get, uh, you are getting a decent saving over the more mainstream brands and any problems that I've had, Banggood have usually resolved quite happily. So I'm quite happy to recommend them as a retailer. So hopefully you enjoyed this slightly different video, but until next time, thanks for watching.